Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, over the years, of all the fighters I've pubbed here online, by far the most controversial is James DeGale. Right? I've spoken to people who are heavily into boxing and they just don't get it. Right? They they hear me talk about James DeGale. They keep expecting him to lose against um, less than stellar opponents. Folks are always surprised when this guy wins. They feel embarrassed for me when I talk about this guy on the same level as the best fighters pound for pound in the sport. The only other guy who I pub who gets as much negative feedback where I'm on Twitter and people are saying, hey, uh, Dwyer, you're crazy, is uh, Timothy Bradley, right? He's the only other guy. Now, let me say this. DeGale, I understand, doesn't fully translate on film. I get it. Right? He's an outlier. In other words, that jab, that little backhand swat, doesn't look completely functional. I understand that DeGale himself isn't really a blessed athlete. Right? He doesn't look like he has the reflexes of a Roy Jones. Right? I understand that. He doesn't have the great foot speed. George Groves on his back foot was able to stay away from him, right, for the entire fight. He doesn't quite have the hand speed. When the gal comes in, it's not a Manny Pacquiao combination, right? I get it. I know the Andre Durrell crowd looks at their man and sees a guy who's bigger, sees a guy who they feel haven't lost, right? Hasn't lost. That loss to Carl Frotch is a little bit questionable. The Carl Frotch people have to concede that of all the fights Carl Frotch has had, and I mean all of the fights Carl Frotch has had, right? The Andre Durrell fight is among the three most toughest. Right? The Andre Ward fight was tough on Carl. That first um, Mikael Kessler fight, an argument can be made. Right? We might even throw in the George Groves first fight. Okay, perhaps. But understand, in the Groves fight, Carl at least severely hurts George Groves later on in that fight. Right? The Mikael Kessler fight, you really have to wonder how that fight would have been scored in a neutral location. Right? The Andre Ward fight wasn't in the United Kingdom. Now, the Andre Durrell fight was in Carl's backyard. And that fight was close. Right? I personally thought here online, I predicted Frotch would win. Then I saw the fight. I thought Andre Durrell won the fight. In my post-fight video here online, I actually said so. Right? The judges. I believe it was a split decision. Right? I'm sure the Carl Frotch people understand that this was a close match. Understand, though, that the James DeGale George Groves match was also a close match. And let me say this I thought DeGale won the fight. I'm not alone. I believe several major papers throughout Europe thought DeGale won the fight. Let me say that George Groves in that fight was the best George Groves has ever been. Right? Groves isn't as good. 
in either Carl Frotch fight. George Groves gives the performance of his life. And understand, the fight was close against the Gale. I believe the Gale would never allow that fight to proceed that way ever again. As it was, James the Gale clearly wins the last half of that fight. Clearly wins the last half of that fight. The Gale had cracked Groves' code. Even though there was big money out there, Groves never fought the Gale again. Even though there's big money out there, Carl Frotch has never fought the Gale. I'll concede Durrell has the quicker feet, the quicker hands, uses length better, moves better than James DeGale. I'm taking James DeGale in this fight. I think DeGale is a rare talent. I'll agree. You look at what DeGale's doing and you don't know what the hell he's doing. Right? There are times in DeGale fights where you're looking at the TV and you're wondering, what is he thinking? But just understand, few guys, and I know trainers, look at him and say he's doing too many things wrong. This is that rear fighter who, in my opinion, is ahead of the trainers. Let's talk about it. Now, first, to the people who keep leaving messages on videos saying, Dwyer, the Gale is slow, Andre Durrell is faster than him, etc. You do understand, don't you, that while we talk about foot speed and hand speed, there's more to boxing. If you don't believe that, just go into your video archives and look at the recent Manny Pacquiao-Floyd Mayweather fight. Right? Understand, Manny Pacquiao, even in that fight, has faster hand speed than Floyd Mayweather. Right? Manny Pacquiao looks like he has the better legs than Floyd Mayweather. Manny Pacquiao gets beaten in that fight on my scorecard by at least four rounds. Right? Hand speed and foot speed aren't all there is in boxing. Now let's continue to use the Manny Pacquiao-Floyd Mayweather fight as a benchmark. Now just imagine Floyd Mayweather is fighting Manny Pacquiao. Just imagine Pacquiao is coming in, doesn't have a stiff jab. Now just imagine as Manny Pacquiao comes in on Floyd Mayweather, he's not looking for a quick strike. He's not. As he comes forward, he doesn't want to just steal a sandwich from Floyd Mayweather's fridge and then come back and try to steal a sandwich again. No, he actually wants to come into Floyd Mayweather's kitchen and cook himself a meal. Just imagine he's not moving fast. There's no surprise here in the attack. Just imagine he's on his front foot. Floyd throws a right hand, throws a right counter to keep him outside. And just imagine that James DeGale coming inside has that right hand blocked. Just imagine Floyd trying to figure out the angles. Just imagine James DeGale coming inside, bending down on his legs to the point where you don't know if he's fighting out of a southpaw or an orthodox stance. Imagine Mayweather wants to protect himself from the straight left because James DeGale, ostensibly, is a southpaw. Just imagine, though, that DeGale throws more than a straight left well. Just imagine that DeGale, in addition to camouflaging, whether he's coming in 
southpaw or righty, right, in slow motion, right, is throwing too many kinds of punches. Not too many punches, but too many kind of punches to plan for. Just imagine Floyd has a shoulder up, does a shoulder roll. It's not really a shoulder roll, it's a shoulder guard, isn't it? Let's say Floyd tucks his head and has his, has his shoulder in the way. Just imagine if the gale can throw right around the shoulder, right? Isn't throwing routine punches is actually on the fly aiming the shot. And just imagine if there's a 3D element to what he's doing, right? Manny Pacquiao is short. He's always coming in the same way, right? He's trying to hit you in the face. If he hurts you, he'll jump in. He'll throw body shots. James DeGale is different. James DeGale is coming in slowly. He knows he has most of what you're throwing back blocked because he's coming in, he has his hands up, right? And he's tucking short hooks to your body. He's throwing uppercuts. He then is throwing wide angle shots as you back away, right? Understand, I don't believe personally that there is anyone in the sport of boxing who can stay in the pocket against James DeGale when he's on his front foot. I don't. Right? Now, DeGale had a bad fight. There's no question about it. Against a guy named Peter Wiskuski. Right? And understand in that fight, that guy came forward on his front foot against James DeGale. In fact, as I look it up here, I see the fight. It was October 15, 2011. What a lot of guys now try to do with James DeGale because they know they cannot stay in the pocket when James DeGale comes forward on his front foot. They know that. So what they try to do now is they try to come forward and get the gale on his back foot. This is the opposite of what George Groves did. Right? They understand the George Groves strategy wouldn't work today. Right? The better strategy is to try to blow James the gale out of the pocket, to smother his angles. Right? To have him in retreat. The problem with that strategy is that James DeGale has developed into one of boxing's best fighters now on his back foot, right? I'll say this. I think Andre Durrell's style is a young man's style. I think James DeGale's style is going to age better in many ways James DeGale is like James Tony, right? Andre Durrell, you know, they say the legs are the first to go. I'm not saying Andre Durrell's legs are gone now. I'm not. But what I'm saying is that Durrell's style requires more stamina than James DeGale's style. I believe Andre Durrell is going to try to fight this fight like he fought against Carl Frotch. He's going to try to stick and move. Use movement. Get the other guy resetting his feet. Right? I don't believe you can beat James DeGale today outside in. I don't. Right? I believe the stick and move strategy doesn't work because DeGale on his front foot is simply too much. He's going to be cutting off the ring. He's going to make you look like a runner. Then he's going to start to dominate later in the fight like he did in the Groves fight. Right? And folks, that's supposed to be his one loss. Now, the Gale on his back foot, it's a little bit different. But understand, on his 
back foot. James DeGale can throw either very short punches or can adjust the punches so he's throwing wide angle shots that get around most fighters' conventional guards. Right? Brandon Gonzalez tried to come inside on James DeGale. He succeeded early in backing up James DeGale. DeGale figured out the angles, started throwing big hooks, right? Started throwing wide angle shots. Gonzalez couldn't figure out what he was throwing, right? I believe Andre Durrell is going to find that he cannot stay in the pocket against James DeGale. I believe Andre Durrell is going to try to be on his back foot. Then he's going to realize that he cannot be on his back foot for 12 rounds against James DeGale. There's going to be a moment where these guys are going to have to fight. Andre Durrell himself, while he says Frotch has more heart, concedes that James DeGale has more skill. There's a reason why... Carl Frotch doesn't want to fight James DeGale. It's because when these two men sit in the pocket, James DeGale would have the upper hand on Carl Frotch. Right? So too it is here against Andre Durrell. If these guys were running a decathlon, Andre Durrell probably wins it. Andre Durrell is taller. He's the bigger athlete. He's the better athlete. Okay, great. He has the faster hands. He has the faster feet. This is the sport of boxing. There's too much to hit on Andre Durrell. When James DeGale gets up close to him and unveils what Groves' former trainer, Adam Booth, calls his blender. In other words, shots up and down that you can't counter because DeGale has a defensive construct. I believe Andre Durrell is going to wilt. Right? If Durrell comes on his front foot, he's going to find he's out of his league. Durrell on his back foot should make this fight interesting for a few rounds. But again, think about the second half of the George Groves fight. You had a young man in his mid-twenties committed to moving in that fight. Right? And George Groves lost most of those rounds. Right? My point to you is, Andre Durrell will look good early. He's going to lose most of the second half of, that, of this fight. Let me also say, too, that the Gale is such a clean puncher. Forget hand speed. Let's just talk about timing. A lot of boxing is outside of hand speed. It's timing. The Gale is such a crisp puncher that most of his recent opponents haven't gone the distance. They haven't. Right? I'm expecting Andre Durrell to wilt in the second half of this fight. Maybe he goes the distance. Maybe he doesn't. I believe it's going to be a struggle. And I believe after this fight, several of you here online are going to say, Dwyer, what do you see in James DeGale? You're going to hear DeGale got lucky. You're going to hear Andre Durrell had an off night. You're going to hear that Durrell has the superior hand speed, has the superior foot speed. Right, folks, all I'm trying to do here is pick the superior fighter. Right? It's hard to explain what this guy is doing. He doesn't have the best jab. He's not the quickest. His timing, his balance... His creativity, his adaptability are off the scale. I like the Gale. I understand the fights in Boston, in the United States. As I like to say, big deal. Right? I'm going with the better fighter here. I think the Gale picks up a title. I think this guy's one of the very best in the sport, pound for pound. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.